All right, hello and welcome to another expert insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Ryan Paul, who is up in lovely San Francisco. How are you doing, Ryan? Very well, John. Thanks. Good, good. And Ryan is a sales coach, speaker, philosopher, and world traveler. So that's quite a combination there. <laughs> it's a deadly conversation. <laughs> exactly. Um, and what we wanted to talk today about is about Ryan has uh, how he approaches things. He you approach things uh, what you call a hold a whole person approach in what you do. So can you give us a little bit of insight as to what you mean by whole person approach? Yeah, absolutely, John. You know, I, I think more and more when we think about the psychology of the workplace and a lot of the research that's coming out, we're we're realizing that um, we're human, mm -hmm. <laughs> first and foremost. It's a, it's a great realization for society <laughs> to have. And that, you know, more and more it, organizations who can create an environment that allow people to show up in their most authentic way, has a, that has an enormous impact on things like engagement, retention, and, and performance. And so conceptually, uh, that's what we mean when we talk about the whole person, is that Organizations and sales teams, I think this is even more so, perform better when you allow and focus on developing the whole person of your of your salesperson. And so, you know, another way that I think about it is working from the inside out. Right. So much of, of development has been focused on the outside. And what, what I mean by that is the, the external behavior. So we want to help people be better communicators or we want to help people, we want to help sales teams be better challengers. We want to increase the ability to, to give feedback, for example. You know, all of these different external behaviors, which are important. Mm -hmm. What has been, you know, historically completely neglected are those inner traits, things like resilience, calm, purpose, mindfulness, right? These are at least equally as important to those external behaviors. And so a whole person approach is a way to think about developing employees that takes both of those into account. Yeah, and it's a, and it's a fascinating uh, approach, I think, because, I mean, more than ever, uh, I think, you know, we've become a kind of disconnected and this technology has gotten in the way and all, and all of this. And I think there is almost a, an epidemic of, what's the opposite, inauthenticity or whatever, because you don't know what's real anymore, right? You don't know what's real from, you know, when people on social media, you don't even know whether you're um, communicating with the real person half the time when you're engaging online with bots and everything. So I think there is definitely, it's a great time because I think there's a craving from all of us to deal with real authentic people and especially in a sales context, right? Absolutely. It, it has been an epidemic, John. And I, I think that that's the right word. And again, at, at the most simple, simplest level, I do think of it as us waking up to our humanity again. So it, it's a great thing. I mean, just look at the rise of, of, of the, the, you know, things like meditation, things like yoga, things like mindfulness. They're coming back to life. We're understanding the value of purpose and the value of meaning, right? And organizations and institutions are starting to realize this. So it's, it's all positive. We're moving in the right direction. But there has been historically this pretty significant gap. Yeah. And I think the other thing is we've also because uh, we were talking before coming on air, I was uh, talking to Ryan about you know, my introduction to America was during the dot com era um, up in Silicon Valley. And I do think there is there is a little bit of that that's still hung over in this idea that you know, you can create an, you know, authentic culture in your company by being all like, you know, let's wear colored shirts and let's do and this. And and that's not really it. I mean, that is just that's just putting a gloss on things. Right. Absolutely. I mean, you can't. That's kind of a, a top-down approach to authenticity, if you will. It, it really it can only come from the individual level. It comes from the inside out. And so for organizations, it becomes about creating the environment where that can thrive. You can't, you can't force it. That's, that's the antithesis of authenticity, right? Right, yeah. And how do you uh, – so here's, here's another part of that equation. So allowing or encouraging authenticity, that's not kind of giving people a license to just be, well, this is who I am and I don't you – know, I can do whatever. I can do things the way I please because I'm being authentic. That's not, the, that's not it either, right? Well, it's not, no. And, and that's a really good point, John, because it can sometimes be misconstrued as that. You know, on the one hand, you have – autonomy, right? That, that is increasingly important to allow people to do things in their own way, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But the flip side of that coin of autonomy is accountability. Yeah. 
And so th those come hand in hand. And so you create, you know, an open environment, you give more autonomy, you let people work from home, for example, right? Remote, remote work is, is a growing trend. Yet you make sure that the goals and the expectations are clear and you still hold keep you hold people accountable to those results. So it's kind of like setting up the guardrails, but really allowing people to find their own path, their own authentic way to ultimately get there. Yeah, and I think the and you're absolutely right on the accountability piece, because sometimes it's it's tough with people. Because if you say accountability, everybody would agree. Say yes, every, everybody should be held accountable. But they normally are talking about everybody else, right? Rather than starting with themselves. And another point about um, remote working, because we're definitely seeing this whole change in you know how companies are constructed, right? And there's a lot more remote and 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 all of that. And in fact, here's an interesting one. Um, a lot more selling is going on remotely, right, rather than, you know, seeing somebody face to face. Um, so there is a challenge for a salesperson. How do you create, how do you come across or, or convey all your or allow your authenticity to come across if you're if you're in majority of times talking with people virtually or with the with the you know machine in between? Mm. Do you feel like John that I have come through authentically on this video call? Yeah, I do, and that and that's why we're a big proponent of it. Uh, but I think to to that point though, it's funny uh, you have to with a lot of salespeople even still today, you have to persuade them to switch their camera on. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that, that that does still happen. So so that's a, I think if we put that aside, I guess to whether or not people even mm. want to engage with a video or not. I think it's surprising how little of a gap there is between me and you having this video call right mm -hmm. now. So is that you and me sitting in a room. Sure. It would be different if we were sitting live and I could shake your hand and we could have, you know, a slightly different interaction. But, you know, other than that, I, I can still see you. I can hear your enthusiasm coming through. And so, you know, selling through video or, you know, having a team that's set up remotely, it's not as big of a as a gap mm -hmm. I think, as as people tend to assume it would be. And so, do you think that uh, going forward in, in in the workplace, whether it's sales or otherwise, is that we are going to have to become more and more comfortable with different ways that people operate? Because even even when you when you get everybody into a building, you can somewhat like drive a particular approach or a particular way of doing things but when you have people spread out it's a little more difficult so you have to become comfortable with that right i agree yeah you're definitely gonna have to come comfortable with it because it's a reality it already is this you know this isn't even that new and it's extremely pr prevalent and you know just wait till we start putting on glasses and vr and ar enters the picture right mm -hmm. so you know i think of it as these are different we're gonna have to get more comfortable with diverse ways of engaging with people it's not that we're going to completely cut out having any type of live face-to-face -face mm -hmm. discussions. Those are still important. You know, we still do those as a sales organization. However, we're going to have to get comfortable with a diverse set. So not always being able to sit with John live in a room. Sometimes it's going to be a video call. Sometimes it's going to be a phone call. Sometimes it's going to be via email, you know, text, VR, live meetings. So organizations are going to have to get comfortable with, you know, leveraging these different ways to connect with one another. And another question is, uh, we've heard a lot over the last couple of years about, uh, you know, the the demise of the salesperson, uh, you know, which is greatly exaggerated to 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 mangle the saying. Um, so, what are your thoughts on that? Because my personal ones are that the sales salespeople are going to become more important because um, because people are so overwhelmed, they're so inundated with information, they're so disconnected that they want somebody they can trust. So I think the trust factor goes up and the importance goes up with it. Yeah, John, I, I, I agree with that. I think that the sales role is being elevated is actually how I think about it. And I say that for a few reasons. One is, you know, a lot of the tasks within sales that can be automated will be automated. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, and we're already seeing this in, in the buying landscape, for example, in B2B sales and how people want to be sold to, the expectation of what you as a salesperson bring to the table is going up dramatically, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone has access to the same information. And so when you come in and interact with someone as a salesperson, you are meant to be extremely knowledgeable. You are meant to have done some homework about John and who he is. You are expected to have looked at the end report of 
you know, sales pop if you guys were, you know, a publicly traded sure. company. And they're looking to engage with the salesperson because they want to learn something new. They want you to truly bring value that they can't find on their own. And so in that sense, I think that the role of a salesperson is truly being elevated. And that is going to drive a wedge, I think, between great salespeople and not so great people. I think the bottom of the barrel uh, within the sales world are going to struggle to survive, so to speak, if they're simply relying on, uh, you know, large volumes of numbers and and poor outreach and bad communication skills, you could probably have survived off of that up until today. But I think that's going to become increasingly difficult. And so the, the bar is going to move and that's going to be great for great salespeople because they're going to rise up with that bar. But the, the bottom of the bottom of the barrel, so to speak, will struggle moving forward, I believe. Yeah, I, I, mean, I agree with you because I think that uh, part of that being able to bring additional value is that you know, salespeople have to ha- have to have good business acumen. They have to understand the business of business. They have to understand the business of their buyer. Uh, because how can you come and provide insight if all you know is your product, but you don't really know anything about the, the customer's business or their industry, right? Absolutely. Those salespeople won't make it. Mm-hmm. So what are some of the other things that you're seeing that may be some of the uh, some of the demands on salespeople that are changing and how the future, what do you see about the future of sales and what are some things salespeople can look to do to improve their, their uh, effectiveness going forward? Absolutely. I think there's a couple of things. I mean, you know, sales from a salesperson's perspective is changing, but what's changing simultaneously with, with that is the buying process. Mm-hmm of the customers. So you have these, both sides of the, of the equation are, are changing dramatically and that is increasing the complexity of sales. And so as a salesperson, you know, again, I think it comes back to this idea of really needing to step up your game. Mm-hmm. Sales will need to have higher levels of business acumen than ever before. They need to, um, it's more time consuming than ever before to really do their homework. Um, they need to be able to put on the, the the hat of a consultant and help their customers think differently. And in addition to that, you then have the buying process, which has become so much more convoluted and sophisticated, right? Particularly since the Lehman shock and, uh, you know, budgets got strapped and no one wanted to, you know, put their, their head on the line, so to speak, to be the single decision maker for making a decision or not. They want to get everyone involved and they want it to be a, you know, a consensus decision so that everyone kind of owns a piece of the pie. And so as a salesperson, you've got to, you've got to talk to more people. Um, you've got to, you've got to know your stuff more than ever before. Um, you've got to help them, them being the customer, you have to help mm-hmm. buy. You talk to 10 different people and they have 10, 10 different objections or 10 different reasons why they think that's valuable. How do you help them come together? And it's hard. It, it's really difficult. At the same time, we, you as a salesperson have more tools than ever before mm-hmm. to support you, right? You know, you've got platforms like LinkedIn that will give you incredible insights within seconds. You've got, um, you know, incredible access to online training system. You know, you've got so many more tools and resources around you, which is good. But there's just this, I think it really speaks to the need to evolve as a salesperson. And I mean, who knows how this will continue to change, but uh, I can't imagine that the rate of change in this game is going to slow down. Yeah. And I don't think it's going to get any easier because uh, you raise a good point is when we had the financial crash and, you know, before that, Budgets were plentiful and people were like, yeah, give me 20 of those. Uh, no problem. And had, you know, high sign off levels for budget. And obviously that all went away. And it's kind of like that phenomenon maybe after the Great Depression where maybe things have improved again, but people are still sort of with one eye on the, you know, the past. And so they're still reluctant, as you say, to sign off on things. So it does require a greater level of trust building and persuading them that they are making the right decision to move forward. And I think getting back to what we first started talking about, I think that's where the authenticity is critical, right? Because if you come to me and I'm going to make a buying decision as a B2B buyer, there's, you know, there's a lot riding on it and my name is going to be attached to this. So I'm going to really need to believe you and trust you that I'm making the right decision. Absolutely. And, and those two things, John, belief and trust and credibility, those are those are big topics, you know, and, um, you know, what I try to communicate to, to my sales team here at BetterUp is I think more and more what buyers are looking for is they're looking for salespeople to show up more like a coach 
yeah. than a salesperson, right? To help them understand the different options, to help them navigate all the possible solutions, to help them with their own thinking and to help them champion something internally, right? Almost like a Sherpa. Mm -hmm. you know? Because if, if I'm a buyer and, and um, I buy into whatever it is that John is, is selling, I know that I can't do it on myself. So I really need your help, John. How can you arm me? How can you help mm -hmm. me take this internally? And so I need I need you as a coach almost in, in that degree and, and not just as someone that's an expert in your product and your solution, because I can go online and I can learn all that by myself. So I need you to bring a little bit more to that interaction if I'm going to feel like it's valuable. Yeah. And so, uh, like I said, as we started at the beginning talking about this whole person approach, I, I think it's more and more that you have to come on. You have to allow yourself to be a real person with the customer and be authentic. And, you know, sometimes that's going to mean delivering a hard message. Maybe that's going to be sometimes it's maybe it's going to cost you business sometimes because you have to sort of say, this isn't really going to work for you. The, now that I've got deeper into it, this is not the right solution for you. But but ultimately, that's what's going to win. You're exactly right. It's, it's not about making friends and being overly agreeable. Mm -hmm. It's about um, showing up authentically doing your own thinking and, you know, pushing back and challenging a buyer when it's necessary. That's how you ultimately really drive towards respect and becoming a true trusted advisor, right? When they value your thinking in order to do that, sometimes you, you have to push back, you have to hold your ground, you have to do a lot of things that some salespeople aren't comfortable with, but increasingly they're going to have to become comfortable yeah. with it. And not to be a chameleon. I think that's the worst thing you can be as a salesperson. And I think that used to be a, a trend with some sectors of sales, you know, where you'd be the, you know, you'd be super friendly, trustworthy, you know, great person during the process. And once you signed on the dotted line, you're like, oh, I'm off. And then if you call <laughs> me, I'm, I'm a, you're, I'm, you're talking to a totally different person when you call them post sale, right? So back to your point again, is you have to, whoever you start out being, you, you need to continue being that person. Absolutely. So what are other uh, last uh, pieces of advice that uh, you give to your sales team or to other salespeople about how to stand out in the market today? You know, it's <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's really some of the simple mm -hmm. stuff, John, that, you know, I, I still see gaps, you know, when I work with when I work with different sales teams. It's things like customer centricity, mm -hmm. you know, which starts with preparing for a meeting instead of asking yourself what is it that I want to get out of this meeting what is it that I want to tell them you ask yourself what is it that I think the other person wants to get out of this meeting what, what is it I think that they want to learn right and carrying that customer centricity all the way through my job is not to sell you something my job is to help you in a way and just that mindset is absolutely critical it's a hard thing to teach um, but it really does differentiate you as as a salesperson um, I think also this idea of, of being able to push back and to challenge customers, right? I mean, when the, mm -hmm. the Challenger sale came out, a lot of that research turned what we thought about sales upside down. It said that, you know, the worst performer is the relationship builder, mm -hmm. the person who's nice and loves to chat and build rapport. They're, they're the worst performer in sales organizations. The top performers tend to be challengers, right, who, who do show up more like a coach and who are willing to push back and to challenge and to stretch someone's thinking. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think if you can start to do some of those things, um, be disciplined and always do the thinking for your customer that you'll, you'll differentiate yourself. And no matter how sales evolves and the tools evolved and, and AI, if you can continue to show up with that right mindset um, and some of those, some of those inner psychological mm -hmm. skills and resources, you'll, you'll find a way to rise. Us. Yeah, and and I, I love that as a finish because at the end of the day, it's 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 back to that four-letter word, you know, hard, hard work. Those two four-letter words, you put them together. If you do the do the hard yards, you'll you get the results. You got it. Yeah. Well, this has been fantastic, Ryan. But before we go, I want to give you a chance to tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can learn more about you and your organization. Sure, absolutely. So. My name is Ryan Paul. I lead sales training and enablement for a really exciting startup called BetterUp. We are trying to help professionals all over the world live their lives with greater clarity, purpose, and passion. And we do that by helping people transform. And right now we're, we're focusing primarily on, on doing that through mobile scalable coaching. So we strongly believe that coaching is one of the most powerful tools for learning and transformation. 
it always used to be restricted to the C-suite. They were the only ones who had the, the right to have an executive coach. We're now democratizing coaching, and we believe that every employee at our organization should have access to their own coach. And so uh, we are very passionate about being able to provide that psychological resource for people. Um, if you want to learn more about us, betterup.co. And you can certainly find me uh, on LinkedIn. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. And yeah, 100% endorse that. I think everybody should have a coach. And and I agree. I, I think it has been restrictive in the past. And to be honest, a lot of no, uh, there's not that many people have really known how to be a coach. And there's lots, unfortunately, lots of people have tried to be coaches or thought they were coaching, but they weren't. So I love the idea of democratizing coaching so that it's available to everybody. Uh, so great. So listen, thanks again, Ryan. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline, your CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Cheers.